okay good day guys and you're welcome again to my channel this is joshua the designer thank you for hanging around and today i'm here to give you a very short and amazing tutorial video again on how to go about your roof gutter how to form your roof gutter in your building design with using product structure and in case you are here for the very first time i would encourage you that you use the like button and you subscribe to this channel and also share with your friend by subscribing and liking our videos you tend to be positioned to receiving our, our, our new tutorials as soon as we drop them you get them first and and that we serve you appropriately okay today as we go on to learn how to have our roof gutter slab using product structure and um, i'm showing you two particular sectional view here of the roof gutter slab and um, they are bounded by two parallel beams two beams on the right one on the right and the other on the left this is what i mean i mean this particular beam and this particular beam now and this is the slab the gutter slab then we have these are uh, pipes in case you have um, a beam intersecting the the groove gutter at any point you can create a pipe to convey water from one end to another the purpose of roof gutter is to particularly channel water or any liquid sloping from one direction to another any gutter slab the the purpose is to channel whatever liquid or whatever thing that should pass from one point to another without spilling beyond the borders okay so that is what we want to learn today and um, they are they can be in several ways but i want to show you just two ways now this is first um the kind of gutter slab we can have where the the gutter slab itself is sitting directly on the bottom of the beams holding it in in form while the second one can be at an offset distance from the bottom or from the top of the beams supporting it okay so let's get into business using our product structure and that will get it in few minutes then we'll be we'll be done okay yeah guys this is um a plan representing the areas that are to that are um supporting the roof itself this is the area that the roof itself is going to sit upon that is anything beyond this area is not the roof um yeah it's not it's not the roof itself right so i want to create a roof got on one of the edges of these four sides so that i'll show you and you can apply this in your um, individual designs and whatever it is so please ensure that anything that you do not get clear you use the comment section and i'll be there right there to give you an answer to whatever question that you have to ask okay so now i want to use this side to create a roof gutter uh, i want to just create a roof gutter along this side so i like that you pay attention now because definitely your slab will be supported by something in particular an element in particular so i want to support my roof gutter with um beams coming from the 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 roof itself the roof beams i want to support my roof gutter slab with my roof beams okay so then i can create a cantilever um part of my beams individual beams so i can bring those beams out to be able to support the slab okay so i have that and i can create another air then i can put another air then another air now because i want to also create another beam to tip the edges of the slab that we we'll have or to create a connection between these beams that i have already so i'll just create um a, a another beam that is a little bit um slim or a little bit um, not thick as this one that I have. I can have it with lesser width um, than this one. So I can have a 150 um, wide beam, but this can still be a 450 beam. Okay, so this is what I have now. Okay, so I have this. This is a 450, a 150 by 450 beam. Okay, so I have that already. So I can now insert my roof gutter slab into all of this now mind you this beam that we have already 
and these beams that we have that we just created now they are on the same level they have the same reference level bottom reference and top reference level now but remember that our roof slab should be in a way that it does not allow water to spill out of the boundaries of this the the, the bounding um, beams or whatever structure is retaining the water it should not it should be in a way that the it does not allow water to overflow or split spill out of the bounding elements okay so we have slab so the depth of the slab we can use 100 or we use 120 whatever it is so but the type of slab we use is this okay now uh, i have to point out to us that the roof gutter slab being on the roof doesn't mean that it doesn't carry any load as the imposed load because remember that even if it's um, water is being uh, if, it's, if it's water that is being conveyed through the slab or in the slab it will mean that this water will constitute a temporary load and this temporary load um, also is the imposed load now because the water can't be in the slab always and forever so it comes and it goes it flows it comes and it goes it flows so definitely this constitutes um a an imposed load a live load right so that is why we have a value for our imposed load here so you use that as recommended or as applicable in your design so i can insert this with reference to a reduced level did you see with reference to a reduced level so that your your slab will be sitting as you it is supposed to sit so i'm having a 450 beams i'm having 450, 450 by 25 beams surrounding my roof gutter and i have i want to use 100 mm thick slab that is to say that i'm now going to remove the thickness of my slab from the depth of the beams now so that i my slab can sit accurately um having the same reference bottom level with all other beams okay let's see what i'm trying to say so that you can understand so i'll use minus 350 because if i had placed this slab here without using the reduced level it would have been on the top of these beams just as our suspended floors floor slabs used to be right so i need to take it down a little more so that it can sit and my water or whatever liquid is passing through can actually be contained yes good so i can have it here i have it here i have it here now meanwhile somebody will ask me a question that these beams intersecting at this point and another one intersecting at this point are going to obstruct the flow of water in this channel now that is the essence of this piping these pipes that i actually place here so there's going to be a little chisel or drill in those beams or while before you're casting right you don't even need to chisel or, or drill yeah it makes it more easy while before you cast at all you can just place this pipe into those sections that you want to fit into then you cast that way so by the time water is in a section you can actually flow through this pipe into another section so that is the intention that is the wisdom behind that okay so let's see how this one actually looks like in um in reality so let's see let's check our 3d view and see how far we've done um, with uh, with that. Okay, so our roof roof gutter is set up here. So did you see what exactly we have created from here? So if the roof is leaning on this particular beam, this beam definitely the water now is being transferred by slope of the roof into this gutter. So whatever it is you want to channel this water flow into the channel through then you can actually pass it um, into this so this is how we have our roof gutter on this level yes i really hope um somebody got that so accurate okay so that is how to have our roof gutter slab on the roof so in case you have any question you can do well to use the comment section now somebody would have asked what if i don't want these to sit directly with the same reduced level as the surrounding beams such as we have here let me show us again so that you understand what i'm saying again so if you don't want that to sit together with the same reduced level as other beams now this is what i'm saying 
if you check this now did you see that the slab and other beams have the same bottom level so what if i don't want these guys to have the same bottom level and i want my beams to be a little bit uh, with an offset distance above this level so you have to just uh, find a way to to toggle your offset distance or reduce level while we were positioning so let's do something about that and we would we'll, we'll wrap up for this particular video now in case you have so, some other questions i have a lot of videos on my channel talking about product structure and how to go about some other things there please reach out to all of the videos watch on how to um step by step guide on how to have your product structure designs on how to make your foundations on how to make your beams on how to insert them different kind of slab insertion systems so you become better so let me show you this that like i said so you select all of these slabs and let's go and toggle our reduce level so what you find here is del z this del z so i may choose to use 250 in this case minus 250 so let me do this so i have minus 250 already so let me go and check what it looks like now we have done this this was what we, do, we did now i want to show us how we can have this so let's go there and see okay so then i can have my 3d view and let's see what i have by implication of the reduced level now let's see if we have our intentions interpreted now did you see you see that there is now an offset distance here so my slab has gone ahead of the bottom level of my beams did you see so that's the intention so whatever it is that suits your design you can please use it in case you have any question on whatever we've just done please use the comment section i'll be right there to give you your reply and to give you much more to get better thank you very much i'm joshua the designer please ensure you like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you catch it first and as soon as it drops thank you bye